Tim Lindsay, I am right off Highway 155, and as you can see right in front of me, the flames and the smoke are very, very thick still at this hour. And it is going to start getting very windy out here as well. We're going to be in a high wind advisory tonight until 10 p.m. I've got my shoes off. I got my feet in the water. It's so nice out here. More than 13,000 people die each year due to speeding, and for Lewis, the issue hits close to home. When Gypsy escaped the next morning, they had no idea that seven puppies were also missing. If the proposed budget cuts are approved, you'll begin to notice things in our public parks like overfilled trash cans, dirtier public bathrooms, and even delays in mowing the grass. But soon parents will have the harsh reality of telling their kids that these parks will be closing in less than two weeks, and it's all thanks to the drought. Although many residents are divided over a Walmart, this huge open space could soon be filled with new employees and customers. Because this is one of the driest seasons on record, everyone from farmers to cattle ranchers say it's crunch time. We are just actually now starting to feel some sprinkles out here. And now that there is moisture in the ground, it will be very easy for trees just like this one to topple over even with very light winds. But one thing that is not beautiful is the dog poop. Luckily, there's an easy fix. If you come over right here, you can see you could just pick up a doggy bag. Truck tailgates can be removed in seconds and can be sold for over $1,000. Delano police say this is one of the many parks they patrol for suspicious activities, but residents say it's not enough to keep these kids safe. The dogs were dumped right over here, and you can still see the blood traces from the dogs. Two dogs and three dead sheep. Stuffed into plastic trash bags, and they were all dumped right in this vicinity. That's what one Tehachapi resident who did not want to be identified began to notice six months ago in a sand canyon flood basin about a mile from his home. And it wasn't until we found this latest batch with two lambs, two dogs, stuffed in the bags and stuff like that, that it was evident somebody had brought these in and dumped them. And then w when you saw the tire tracks coming in and out of here, then it became evident that, hey, this is somebody that lives here. That person is Bobby Sanders, a nearby neighbor who admitted to killing two dogs after the dogs attacked and killed his sheep. I did dump uh, two dogs and uh, three sheep. Maggie Kalar with Kern County Animal Control said officers told Sanders to properly bury the carcasses completely a few months ago. But when we went out to look at the area today, they were only partially buried with visible body parts sticking out of the sand. So the school kids walk right back and forth on that road where your car is there is where the school kids pass back and forth every day. And we see coyotes making their way up and down this on a regular basis. But Sanders says it's not a safety concern at all. Coyotes, no. You know, they, they stay away from humans. They're pretty smart. Animal control showed up at his residence after our interview and told Sanders the dead animals need to be buried again and will follow up in a few weeks. It's uncertain at this point if the dumping is prohibited on this property. I got a tractor. I'll run down there and dig them up and take them someplace else. Uh, but, uh, you know, after a couple of days underground, there's not much left. Animal control, the quicker they could just cover it up and be got done with it, seems to be their approach. Uh, they're taking the ostrich approach of their heads in the sand. If they can't see the carcass, it's not there. Michael Murphy has lived on Old State Road for more than 34 years, but even though the smoke is visible from his home, he's not going anywhere. From what I hear, it's safe right now. But it's a much different situation for resident Brenda Davis just a few miles up the same road. I had photo books in the car and uh, things that were important. Uh, our medicine, of course, and we split. As the flames came billowing down the mountain just yards from her home last night, firefighters suggested they evacuate immediately. Firefighters all stayed around the house and um, helicopters poured water on. Um, it was fantastic. They were, they're great guys. The Shirley fire has now burned 2,200 acres with only 10% containment. 1,000 homes are threatened with already three homes completely destroyed and one is damaged. Today, we'll probably be out here for like 16, 17 hours or so, just uh, covering the day shift until night shift relieves us. Here right off Highway 155, fire crews are staged all along the freeway just in case the fire takes an unexpected turn due to these erratic wind speeds. Fires are usually pushed by the winds and the uh, terrain and it's pretty uh, steep out there and the winds push it. Uh, got some terrain features here that put on some pretty good pushes. Helicopter crews working 24 hours dropping water from Lake Isabella onto the fire along with 10 additional firefighters from the Bakersfield Fire Department to assist in this ongoing battle. They are wonderful. Yep. Couldn't ask for a bunch of better people. Delano, California. Population 51,000.
a city that's a part of the unhealthiest county ranked in California. Come on, let's work up a sweat. Where the city was granted $5 million to remove nitrates from the city's drinking water during this historic drought. I never tried to drink uh, city water. And with no mainstream gyms in sight besides a fitness center at the Delano Community Center, staying in shape seems like defying the odds. But despite these fallbacks, one former Marine is stepping up to lead the community to a better go, and healthier way of life. You just got to keep them moving. Got to keep them moving the whole time. Meet the members of Team Boot Camp. From dusk till dawn, Mario Reyes has his team sweating and pushing their way to lose unwanted weight and do the imaginable. And the best part is, it's absolutely free. And this is one of the best things that's happened in my life. I've been in eight. 5Ks, and I've done one 10K. I did a mud run, and before I'm 50, I plan to do a half marathon. But this workout isn't for the faint of heart. From running to circuit training, these one-hour sessions are filled with people of all ages to come out and change their lives. We found out that obesity actually hits hard in Kern County. And I was part of that. After Reyes served in the Marines, he noticed a steady decline in his health when he started team boot camp two years ago. But as a Delano native himself, he knew the importance of keeping his workouts free for everyone. I knew how tight money is for everybody around town. And a lot of these people doesn't have the money for boot camp like this. So we put in all our money and we basically, all the gears that you see here are all donated amongst us and we all bring it together. And with over 100 participants with before and after photos to prove it, Team Boot Camp means more than just a workout. We're all here to support each other. We're all here for each other. I really, uh, I really thank him from the bottom of my heart for, for doing what he's doing. I'm grateful that they're out here. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that they're here, that they're helping us. Good job, bro. Leah Steinberg, 23 ABC. You can't um, do background checks on everybody that's going to be in that operating room. When Darcy White went in for a shoulder surgery at Mercy Hospital, she expected a routine procedure, but claimed her anesthesiologist nurse was anything but normal. I went into surgery on February 12th. Um, for reconstructive surgery. White says she doesn't remember much until the Monday morning after her surgery. Next thing I remember is waking up Monday morning and reading through a series of text messages, um, even call logs. She allegedly found text messages and a picture that was sent to her by the anesthesiologist nurse that references her appearance and clothing size. It continued and then on Monday she said he called again and she'd already called the hospital I think. And um, I uh, said, well, let's call him back. And she, you know, handed me the phone and I called him. And he proceeded to tell me that he was doing his job following up. I said, well, you called 10 times and text? Come on. 23 ABC got a hold of the nurse in question who said he was out of town to give an interview, but admitted to us over the phone he got her phone number from her file and may have taken it too far when he called her to follow up in the days after her surgery. This isn't okay. This is not okay. It is important to note the nurse is contracted through a separate company and not an employee of Mercy Hospital. The hospital responded to our inquiry today saying that patient privacy and safety are top priorities for Dignity Health Mercy Hospitals. We are aware of the allegations and there is currently an ongoing investigation. Because the nurse is not an employee of Mercy Hospitals, we are prohibited from making any further comments in this personnel matter. It pisses me off and, and you know, you just want it to end, but the, the emotional stuff that she's that she's having him just crying like that. That's ridiculous. It's a violation. It clearly is. Leah Steinberg, 23 ABC.